Uh, hello, uh, my name is Juliane Tripati. I am working for the Holst Center, uh, which is a part of TNO in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And I'm going today uh, to present you about the European project Clean for Yield, which it, uh, works towards enabling high yield roll-to-roll -roll production of printed electronics. But first, a short introduction about Holst Center. Holt Center is an independent uh, research institute which has uh, reputed parents. It was founded by IMEC uh, in Belgium and TNO in the Netherlands and it's operational since 2006. Right now there are approximately 180 researchers working here from over 28 uh, nationalities. Uh, however, we also involve researchers from the mother organizations and we also have industrial residents and academic residents. We focus on uh, relevant topics like ultra low power and flexible electronics and also on lighting, solar displays and healthcare. Uh, we are supported by a strong ecosystem, by our global industrial and academic partners and we are embedded in the high tech region in Eindhoven. We are also funded uh, by local and Dutch government. And at the bottom of the screen, you see already some of our applications in flexible lighting, flexible displays, OPV, and also flexible electronics. Where is Holt Center located? Uh, Holt Center uh, is situated at the high tech campus, which was initiated by Philips. The site is shared by around 135 companies and more than 10,000 researchers. Uh, these organizations share lab facilities and clean rooms with more than 25,000 square meters footprint. Uh, now about Clean for Yield. Uh, the title says already what uh, this project is about. We try to enable high yield road road production of printed electronics. First some facts and figures about the project. Uh, the project is funded uh, under the theme FP7 NMP uh, 2011 under development of nanoscale detection and control techniques for large area substrate. The actual project title is Contamination and Defect Control for Increased Yield for Large-Scale Roll-to-Roll -roll Production of OPV and OLED. Uh, this consortium consists of 15 partners from seven countries and the total project cost is about 10.4 million euro with a funding by the EC of 7.06 million euro and Holt Center is the coordinator of this project. Now, a short look on OLED and OPV. Currently, if you buy an OLED, the square meter prices are still very high, around 10,000 euro per square meter. They're made on rigid glass and uh, they use evaporation technologies where you have a huge loss of materials during production. Uh, the vacuum and lithography processes are expensive and time-consuming and a lot of rare materials are used. The future of OLEDs as we see it is that a square meter should cost less than 100 euro. Uh, the substrate should be flexible and the production should utilize most of the material so the loss of material should be reduced to low, below 5%. And uh, this should be achieved by using direct printing processes using mainstream materials and also using fin film encapsulation. If we look at OPV now, the module efficiency is still not very impressive with around 2% on a production scale. Uh, currently, for per, watt, per watt peak, you pay 20 euro and the devices have a rather short lifetime. Also, the production yields are very low and uh, the uh, packaging process via lamination is still on the low end side. However, for the future, we want to achieve 10% new dual efficiency on a production scale. We are looking for less than 50 cents per watt peak costs, and we want to have uh, extended lifetime of a, a loss not more than 10% over 1,000 th hours in accelerated tests. Of course, we want to have a high yield production. I will come back to this in a moment, and we want to use high-end barriers, we want to use direct printing methods, we want to avoid using ITO and we want to produce halogen free. If we now look on what a printed OLED or OPV looks like, uh, yeah, these uh, both devices use the uh, same type of stack. You have a substrate, you have to put down a lower barrier layer which protects the inner functional layers against oxygen and water. 
Then you have your multiple device layers. In a very simple case, three will be enough, but in the more advanced devices, that can be 10 or more. And each of these layers is between 10 and 400 nanometers thick. And then on top, you need to have another protection layer against water and oxygen and also for mechanical protection. And yeah, why would you actually process roll to roll? Well, the answer is, of course, money. If you can do the production of these devices by roll to roll processing, you can save a lot of production costs. You can uh, process with high speeds or with high throughput. You can process at large areas. You can use printing and coating technologies, which are already known from the graphical industry, where you can actually work at hundreds of meters of minute per minute and with very large substrates. And of course, the process is easier to scale than a vacuum system. And flexible substrates have a lot of advantages as well. They're, as said, they're flexible. You can do them in any size and any shape. They're not fragile. You can have them transparent or opaque. They're lightweight and they're low cost compared to glass. Now, what does the coating process in the perfect world look like? Uh, you just add your raw materials, then you do some coating magic, and in the end, you have perfect devices, 100% yield, just coming out of your machine. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. If you compare a sheet-to-sheet -sheet versus a roll-to-roll -roll process, then sheet-to-sheet -sheet processing has its advantages. If you have anywhere in your process something going wrong, you just take the defective half products out and your overall yield is not entirely uh, cumulative. While in roll-to-roll -roll processing, the processing itself is very efficient. However, the overall yield depends very much on the cumulative uh, yield of the process steps. To be cost efficient, your overall process yield needs to be above 95%. That means for each process step, your yield needs to be above 99%. So you need to have a very good process control. As an example, a cost of ownership calculation done for OPV. Of course, uh, the numbers might vary depending on the process and the design of your device and the materials you use. However, usually the main costs of a roll-to-roll -roll process are the raw materials. Fixed and machinery costs are rather minor compared to this. And the only way you can save really on your production costs is to reduce the scrap costs. As said, a roll-to-roll -roll process needs to be uh, at a 95 to 98% production yield to really be cost efficient. And that means, as said, every sub-step yield needs to be above 99%. For example, if you have 10 process steps and each of these steps has a 95% yield, your overall production yield will be on 59%. Uh, so, what are the challenges of roll-to-roll -roll production for printed electronics? Well, first of all, you try to apply very thin layers in a nanometer scale on quite large area substrates and your homogeneity requirements for these layers are very stringent. And the existing coating technologies which have been developed for different applications in the past uh, are driven to the edge of the state of the art and even beyond, so your processes are less stable and uh, they are far more complex. Additionally, the layers you deposit are very soft, very sensitive. They can easily be damaged by handling or by particles. And in general, any presence of particles or contamination and coating defects impairs the functionality of the layers and therefore of the resulting device. And for a high yield production and a sufficient device performance, only a very limited amount of particles and defects can be accepted. So what are typical product defects uh, related to the yield? So any time you have a defective product, it's a non-yield product. Um, each process step can introduce defects and quite different defects at the same time. Uh, for example, product defects uh, for OLED and for OPV can be a reduced efficiency, non-uniformity of the devices, which leads to secondary problems. In an OLED, you can have dark or black spots or bright spots, or it has the wrong color. And in an OPV, you can have low fill factors. In general, your barrier can be compromised and water leaks through, which reduces the lifetime of your devices. If we look a little bit closer to coating defects and contamination defects, uh, 
I have here um, an example of a roll-to-roll -roll coated OLED on the left side. And it shows uh, quite a collection of things which can go wrong. For example, we have uh, inhomogeneities, uh, barring and streaks, where the thickness of your active layers varies and therefore the brightness and the color of the resulting device varies. Then we have dark spots where particles block the light. We have uh, scratches where no materials is left, where you ever create shorts in your device or again you create areas where no light output is. And uh, general particles are a big problem in these kind of devices, depending on the size, the material properties, the wettability of the particle and the location in the particle stack. They can have quite different effect on the device performance. A little overview of a, a few things uh, which can uh, cause, uh, can go wrong, caused by defects and contamination. So if you have a particle in the barrier layer, then the barrier will be compromised. Water and oxygen can leak through the barrier and it will affect your device. On the long term, you will have an accelerated degradation of the device. You will have a reduction of the active area because material gets disabled by the incoming water and oxygen. And you have growing black spots and you have a decreasing efficiency. If a particle is just laying on a barrier, it will block light and again your uh, active area is reduced. Uh, in an OLED you will see a black spot and in OPV you will have an inactive area. If you have particles in the light emitting layer or in the photoactive layer, then again you will have increased leakage currents, you can have accel accelerated degradation. If bare, oh, in or on the electrode, uh, you can have, again, increased leakage currents, shorts, degradation. If there are non-conductive particles, they still will have an effect, even so you might not have uh, shorts or leakage current increase, you still have an inactive area, which leads to reduced efficiency and to black spots. And if you have layer thickness variations, which is also a common defect in coatings, is you will have, again, influence on your leakage currents, you will have uh, increased degradation, you will have different colors of light and brightness and dark, bright or dark areas, and you will have a reduced efficiency. So, what is needed to deal with these issues in a roll to roll process? First of all, you need quality control and process monitoring. You want to know if something goes wrong. And what is going on? Uh, you cannot have an industrial process without process control. You also want to have an instant response to coating uh, problems. You don't want to coat hundreds of meters before you notice something is wrong. You want to have an instant response. Because you cannot take out uh, simply the rejects or you, ha you have to keep processing. Because you have a roll of hundreds of meters of film, you cannot just take out one piece which didn't work. The second thing is you have to actively control your particle contamination. Uh, however, a 100% contamination free environment and substrate does not exist, not even in the best clean rooms. So, uh, and also you have to be aware that your incoming raw materials, like the film, is often produced in a dirty environment. So you, be, you start with a dirty product and you need to clean this. Of course, prevention is always better than treating, so you want to avoid contamination in the first place and defects. So you need to know how to keep your things clean after cleaning and how to reduce uh, contamination during your processing and how to handle sensitive coatings without damaging them. And as a last resort uh, for small defects to increase yield, you can consider also repair. So if you now look at a slightly more realistic view on what an actual coating process for OLED might look like, you will have several steps. You start with the foil production and from there you go to the barrier film deposition and then you will have the deposition of all your uh, functional layers starting with electrode contacts, organic layers and the final electrodes and in the end you will have uh, the deposition of your probably water sensitive cathode and uh, of your final encapsulation layer. And at all these steps you want to, you need to know, do I need to clean, do I need to repair, uh, do I need inspection, where should I do it, how should I do it. 
so that is what this project is about. On, uh, at this project, we target uh, the process for mass production, both for vacuum and non-vacuum processes. Mainly we focus on roll to roll, but also we are looking at sheet to sheet applications. Uh, the final process speed for OLED or OPV is expected to be above 30 meters a minute with web widths over one meter and with a required total yield of 95%. So what are the objectives of the clean for yield project? Uh, we want to develop and demonstrate nanoscale detection and inspection techniques. We want to uh, develop high efficient cleaning techniques. We want to re develop repair technologies and the pre prevention techniques for large area substrates. And in this project, we focus on high-end moisture and oxygen barrier films, on organic light emitting diodes, and on organic photovoltaic. And of course, the goal is to increase yield and also to improve the performance of roll to roll produced devices. In general, we believe that the technologies developed here also can be used for other printed electronics productions. For the process uh, specs for this project, we have decided uh, to also still look on glass, since especially uh, OLEDs are still currently made in sheet-to-sheet -sheet processes using glass substrates. And then there will be a transition phase where it is expected that a foil on glass will be processed. And in the end, we are of course looking at the foil and rotor roll production. In general, we are looking at uh, working on moving substrates with up to 10 meter minute substrate speed, which is currently uh, uh, a speed used at uh, many research facilities. We are looking for 30 centimeter substrate width and yeah, a set for OPV, OLED and barrier films and we focus on particles and defects down to 100 nanometer. And our approach is to unite partners covering each segment of the complete value chain from basic materials and technology developers over to final end users. So as you saw already, we have a quite diverse consortium. We are working on the process and equipment development and component processing with uh, the University of Denmark, the TNO, with the T Technical University of Delft, but also with Rolex, Cortema, uh, Dupont Tejin Films and Philips. And uh, we are trying to develop equipment components for the prevention, for the cleaning, inspection and repair. We also look at development of equipment for full lines and we look at product manufacturing. So we ask the end users what you think is needed to develop a pro for the process, what do you think is needed for having a cost-efficient processing, what are the features of the uh, OLED and OPEV you want to have in the end. If we have a look, short look at the state of the art currently, for inspection there are costly high-end tools for semiconductor and display industry, uh, however, even so, they are very fast in processing, they still require a start and stop of the substrate. This is something which is not possible in roll-to-roll -roll production. Once the machine is running, it has to run and you cannot stop for inspecting layers. Also, many of these inspection tools have been developed for inspection on silicon wafers and glass and these substrates are quite different to a flexible film. In general, for the layer thickness measurement, one nanometer is feasible with ellipsometry already uh, doing it on wafers and glass. However, the acquisition times are very long, so if you want to do it in a roll-to-roll -roll process, you lose a lot of time and you sample over a large area and you just achieve an average value. So this is not suitable for roll-to-roll. -roll. For particles and coating defects on moving plastic films, the state of the art is at the moment around 10 micrometers. However, if you want to go to smaller particles, work is needed. And for electrical defects, the inspection is well known, done uh, at the uh, offline. However, there is no inline techniques for continuous moving substrates and for flexible films. If we look at cleaning, again, a large effort is done in the semiconductor and display industry for rigid sheet-to-sheet uh, -sheet substrates. This is uh, something which cannot be done for roll-to-roll -roll production. So if you look at uh, different options for roll-to-roll -roll cleaning, then we have contact cleaning of flexible substrates where the, the state of the art was around particles around one micrometer can be removed. However, these techniques were not suitable for sensitive surfaces and also not for vacuum processes. 
And then, of course, there's the non-contact cleaning of flexible substrate, and there you often are limited to particles larger than 10 micrometers. Or you can use wet cleaning uh, facilities. However, these have very large footprints. And also for the prevention, the semiconductor industry is uh, uh, the target. But however, the, these uh, facilities use expensive, large, high-end clean room footprints, which are not suitable for roll-to-roll -roll production. And repair is simply not existent on a process level for the addressed applications. Now, what we are doing in this project, we are addressing all these issues. Uh, so for the particle contamination and coating defects, we, are, uh, we have developed technologies to really see particles in the range from 100 nanometer to 10 micrometer using both line scan cameras and scatterometry. And uh, you will also hear more about these technologies in the other videos of this e-conference. And we have uh, worked on measuring the layer thickness variation and aerial coating defects uh, with an accuracy of 2 to 5 percent of the total thickness. And we do this by using line scan cameras again and also using ultra-fast ellipsometry. And we also uh, look at the actual measurement of the final device, the quality inspection. We are using lock-in thermography and uh, light beam induced current which also will be further introduced during this e-conference. And additionally, it was necessary to develop a reliable electrical contacting system for a moving flexible substrate. The inspection of electrical, uh, electrical defects depends also on the quality of on your electrical contacting. Uh, for the cleaning, uh, as uh, said, uh, most of the layers are in the range of 10 to 400 nanometer, with an most averaging around 100 nanometers. So that is also the particles we are looking at. We are looking for contact cleaning for local and full area by using uh, tacky rollers, a technology developed by Technic. And we also have developed these tacky rollers to make them vacuum compatible to allow cleaning of films inside a vacuum chamber. And then we have developed uh, local cleaning with CO2 snow, which allows you to address the random contamination which still might occur in your process. So if you can detect it, you also can clean it. And we also have worked on contact-free full area wet cleaning using narrow gap cleaning technology. And besides of this, we're also looking at chemical contamination and we're doing uh, this by treating the substrates with a local on-demand plasma using plasma printing technology. And the prevention is maybe the most important work package here, because uh, we also want to make sure that we solve generic problems. So far, there was very little knowledge on what is really a problem in an OLED or an OPV. What are the actual reasons for device performance loss? Is every particle a problem? Are only certain particles a problem? Which size? Which material? So we try to attribute the loss of device performance and yield to the actual defects. Uh, in the devices. And then a second important step is to start, to have a perfect start with a good base substrate. So we want to develop a generic, intrinsic, clean and damage-free foil as a base substrate or using protective films to, uh, afterwards to protect your layers before the next step. And by that you can reduce your cleaning and you also can reduce the waste. And of course we are looking into equipment design to have intrinsically clean and damage-free processing and way of working procedures. As said, the standards are set by the semiconductor industry, however, that is not applicable for roll-to-roll -roll processing. However, still you want to avoid contamination and damage by machine and handling to reduce cleaning, to keep clean things clean, to not damage and to reduce waste. And uh, finally, we are also looking at repairs. If you have already a high yield, and you have only occasional defects, you can increase your yield even more by repairing. So, for example, if you have a poor barrier quality that leads to shortening of device lifetime, if you can find defects and then you can, and you can pre repair them, you can prevent this degeneration of the device. Another thing we were looking at was the device of defects in metal grids. 
And finally, the most important and most valuable one, the repair of defects in the actual device. And of course, these uh, technologies are not meant to be just uh, some uh, research in the lab. However, we really want to integrate them in the industry and so we have asked the end users for their device specs and process specs. We look at the industrial standards, what is common, what, how handlings are done. And we also want to make sure that what we develop is feasible. So our end users provide us with feasibility feedback. And of course, right now we're looking at 30 centimeters and 10 meters a minute. But as I showed before, the goal is to go to more than one meter web widths and to go to high, higher processing speeds. So we keep in mind that whatever we develop also should be able to uh, keep up with uh, developments and processing so that all the concepts developed are upscalable. And we also do an actual mechanical integration of the tools developed in the project in existing lines and processes in the consortium. And we also look at software integration, soft user interfaces. We think about feedback systems. So what if your camera system def detects a defect, what do you do with this information? And we look at concepts to combine detection with repair. So to sum it up, Clean for Yield is aiming to improve the yield for roll to roll production of el organic electronics by, first of all, prevention, by understanding defects in devices, how they are, uh, what are the sources related to equipment design, to way of working procedures, and to develop a very uh, good start with the perfect base substrate. Then uh, by cleaning, by contact, non-contact and chemical cleaning steps before the coatings to reduce contamination, which would be harmful to the uh, device. And then detection for both process uh, monitoring and active process control. We are looking at particles and coating defects, layer thicknesses and electrical defects. And we're looking at repair to boost the yield of the production even further by repairing metal grids, by repairing the moisture barrier and by repairing finished devices. But in all of this we do for roll-to-roll -roll processing of flexible substrates with up to 10 meters a minute web speed and 30 centimeters web width. And I thank you for your attention and if you are interested in the project and need more information then visit us at www.cleanforyield.eu.